Morning, Zach. When the season started and, and you guys had tip set that lineup with you and Vogel and Ryan, and we all had this picture of how it was going to go, uh, and it seems like it's going exactly the way everyone hoped it would. Uh, is it the same for you? Is that is this whole thing unfolding every bit as well as you hoped it might? Yeah, we're definitely off to a good start, um, but there's still a, a lot of a lot of hockey to be played in a market like this. If you win five, they're happy. You lose five, uh, they should trade anyone. So I've learned over the years to kind of just stay even keel. Obviously. We're happy with the way the line has clicked. That's that's important for team success. You need more than one or one or two guys to, to create offense, and you need depth to, to win in this league. So we definitely feel good where our game's at, but at the same time, we know there's a lot of runway left, and uh, we need to continue to build our games. We know games are going to get tougher as the games go on here, and we just need to keep building. Uh, maybe I can ask you a quick question about Ryan Nugent Hopkins. You just talked about how they want to trade you after five losses. Nugent has been here for 10 years and had a lot of five-game losing streaks in his life, <laughs> but he's still here, and he's become this subtle, effective player in, 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 the, you know, in the scheme of your team. Uh, you know, how does he evolve? How does he turn into this guy that's still here and still effective? Oh, I don't think he's turned into anyone. He's been arguably one of our best players for the, his duration as an oiler. I remember playing against him. Um, he does everything, right? He's, a, he's so versatile. He plays center, he plays wing, he kills penalties, he's on the power play. Guys like that, they don't come around too often. And uh, just his mannerisms, the way he carries himself. Um, obviously, we have Connor, or Connor and uh, Leon, which are two superstars, but I don't think Nuge gets enough credit for not only what he does on the ice, but off the ice as well. He's a hell of a player, but he's a, he's a great human being, great person. and. Uh, Edmonton's really lucky to have him for as long as they have, that's for sure. Zach, you talked about it's, it's early, but Fogel and yourself, and you throw in Zach Hyman and Yessa Pugliarvi, do you just sense even on the bench, your team's just a better forechecking team. You can disrupt better now collectively in your, in your lines rather than just maybe having one or two guys that can do it. Yeah, I think in order to, to be a good forechecking team or a good forechecking line, you need everyone on the line to uh, contribute a forecheck. You can't have one guy forechecking and the rest sitting back. It's, it's a five-man process to have a good forecheck. It has a lot to do with where, you're, where your other wingers at, where your sentiment, if the D are pinching down, making it hard. There's a lot of recipes that have to go, uh, to go right to get uh, the forecheck down pat. And I think as a line, we've done a really good job as a, as a unit of three, um, taking away time and space. It's, we're, we're dumping the puck in places where we can go back and get it. We're being physical. And in return, our D are uh, holding lines for us and making, uh, making it hard on the other team to get out. So, um, like I said, it's, it's collectively as the five-man unit on the ice. It's not, it's not so much just one person. I don't think you can uh, accomplish what we, what we have done with one person for checking. People will talk about chemistry on a line, and it seems like you found it right away with Fogel and, and Ryan. How much of that is just the style? Like, it seems how Fogel plays really complements how you like to play. You're both big guys who can really skate. You can get on the forecheck. You're obviously smart players at the same time. How, how much does just instant chemistry factor into your success and the way you guys play off one another? Yeah, it definitely helps. Like I said, like you just mentioned, we're two very similar players. I think Fogel's... Uh, we're very simple. We're, when we're at our best, we're going north and we're skating, and uh, we both um, feed off that. Um, if I'm getting the puck in the D zone, I know he's skating, slashing, making it hard on D, vice versa. I think once we get in the O zone, um, we can use our size, strength, skating ability, and playmaking ability to, to make plays in the O zone. But I think for us, why we're having so much success, we're getting, we're, we're getting out of our D zone as fast as we can. We're getting through the neutral zone clean. We're not trying to be pretty. And then once we get it down there, we can create havoc. Zach, what role does Derek Ryan have in it? You're, you're, you and Warren are both big bodies going to the net. He's smaller. So what role does he have on the line? He's, he's the rock on the line. Every, every coach will tell you the sentiment is, is the most important piece on the line. I think face-offs, number one, you want to start with the puck as much as you can. He's been great in the circle this year, and I think uh, he's very smart in the D zone, and he's the one getting winning battles below our goal line, helping out our D, getting pucks uh, moving forward so we can get in the ozone and, and start hunting, hunting pucks and getting on the forecheck. And the Oilers have had a history of doing so much on the rush, whether it's Leon or, or Connor, but when you watch the teams that win, you can't win unless you have forechecking line as well. Is that how you see it? Puck, there's a lots of the grunt work, the dirty work along the boards that winning teams also need, need to have. 
Yeah, you need to be able to score off the rush, but like you said, you, yeah, when as the year goes on and games get tougher, um, you need to be able to score in different ways and throw different different things at, at teams as the as the year goes on. And I think you need to be able to cycle the puck. You need to be able to wear D down. You need to be able to wear other teams down, spend time in their own end. It's not even about scoring goals. Trust me, I don't think we're going to be able to keep this pace up, what we're, what we're at. I'd like to, but obviously um, it's not... Um, very realistic, but I think if we can hound pucks, hold pucks in down there, and set the next line up for success, either whether it be Connor, Leon, whoever it may be, Nuge, whatever, whoever's coming over, um, we're doing a good job as a line. So I think we just need to continue to build off this. And um, like I said, there's a lot of hockey left. So, what is the realistic goal total for yourself? Well, double digits. I, I don't really set goals for myself. It's obviously. Um, you want to see how the team's doing. You obviously want to get double-digit goals. I think it's uh, it's something that I'm fully capable of. I need to get more shots as a line. We we need to create offense. We need to continue it. But um, double-digit goals. I think you look at the good teams throughout their lineup. Um, their bottom six. They're they're scoring double-digit goals. One question on Connor. He gets two points every game. As a player on his team, or how do you look at that? I mean, it's almost like he plays the game. You know he's going to get two points, three points, or four points. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, I always say in the dressing room, I wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want to be a goal scorer or point getter in this league. It's the hardest league to do so. We have the world's best goalies. You look at Connor. Connor goes against the best deep pairings every night, um, the best defensive forward, the best players. And for him to do what he does on a night-to-night basis, he's on another planet. I think he's showing that again, that he has another level crazy to say even say that but I think there's another level to his game um yeah it's it's incredible it really is he makes it look getting points in the NHL easy so um it's incredible for what he's doing when you're gonna, we're gonna need him to continue to uh to produce and lead the team and uh we just need to follow in his footsteps thank you yep uh just a couple more here for you Zach uh you're playing two of the four best face-off teams in the NHL back-to-back in Philadelphia and Vancouver over the last couple of years. Just a thought on, on the importance of what the wingers do to support the centermen in the face-off circle. Philly had a pretty good night against you the other night. Maybe how you can change some of that a bit tomorrow against Vancouver in the face-off circle. Yeah, wingers definitely play a big part. Those 50-50 pucks, you got to kick those back or win, the, win those wall battles for, for the center. But... Face-offs are everything. They're almost overlooked sometimes. Where if you're starting with the puck, um, chances are you're going to end up in the O-zone. Chances are you're going to end up hopefully getting a scoring chance or wearing the other team down. So it all starts with the drop of a puck. And uh, if you're chasing the game all night, um, you, I don't like our odds. Every team in this league has firepower and, and good players. So you want to have the puck as much as you can. And um, if we can help our centermen uh, dig in on draws, because that's what it's all about. Um, we're going to have to do so because, like I said, it's starting with the puck's very important. Now that you've played, I, I don't know if we've got you a quote from you on this, now that you've actually played games at home and on the road, how much better is it with the fans back in the building? And, and do you think it, maybe it's affected your game a bit as well? I, I feel it's, it's awesome. It's, it's showing the world's going back to some normality here. It's, uh, it's night and day. It's not even comparable at the same time. Um, I think it's affected everyone's game. You look around the league, it's even watching highlights. Um, the fans in every city seem like they're, they're happy to be back. We were obviously just in Vegas, and um, the atmosphere in there was phenomenal. We come back home, the atmosphere was awesome the other night. And I think um, it, it's the NHL. It's, it's the NHL again. No one ever wanted to go through a pandemic. Obviously, what was going on around the world was one thing. So we are pretty grateful to even be playing hockey with no fans. But at the same time, it wasn't the regular NHL by any means. So definitely happy things are, are starting to tread in the right direction. Things are starting to get back to normal. Thank you.